If you're looking for a way to organize your leads, your contacts, and your companies, you'll want to check this one out. I will show you step-by-step -step how to build your own custom CRM within SmartSuite. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach Stevenson. I am a business processes and no code consultant. If you have questions about streamlining your processes, send me a message or book a free consult using the link in the description below. Welcome to our channel where you will learn how to save hours of your time every single week. So what you want to do, you'll want to create a new solution within SmartSuite and start from scratch. And it will have an app already built for you with a few additional fields. You can go ahead and delete all those. I've already done that for the sake of time. So from here, what you will want to do is we will rename this app. So you just go and click on it. And right here, you can rename it to leads. So what we're going to do is create three different applications. We're going to have leads, we're going to have contacts, and we're going to have companies. So we'll start with leads and we'll start building this one out. So the way I'm going to structure this, and there's a few different ways, what you could do essentially is have leads, contacts, and companies, and you could lead to your contacts for this use case and to be able to use the automation. I would prefer to do it this way for my own personal preferences. What we're going to do is we're going to create a leads application. And then at a certain stage, we will use the automation to build a contact and company records and link them together. So leads are going to be separate. And then we're going to have companies and contacts linked together. So I'll get started here. First field you want to bring in is a full name field. And we can bring in a text field, which will just be company name. We can bring in a status field. Within the status field, we can remove all of these defaults and we can create our own. We'll do new, contacted, proposal, closed one, closed loss and we can change the color of each of these and we'll set a default as well the default will be new from there we can add in an email address and we can add a phone number And we'll add a smart doc as well. We can leave the name of smart docs or notes. I'll change it to notes. Could add in a single select field. Could be an industry. We want to record that type of information. We could add financial services, manufacturing, construction, and the list goes on. You can create whatever you want, add it in there. And a couple more things. We'll put in a currency field. So that could be your estimated contract value. And you have the option to change different currency selections and precision. Uh, you got defaults again for most of these different field types, but I'll just leave it as is for now. And the last thing in here, I might want to add a file attachment field. So this could be your proposal or something along those lines that you send out to the client if you get to that stage. So that's good enough to get started here. What I will do next is I will duplicate this application because it has a lot of the fields that we already need. So we can duplicate it, contacts, duplicate that app, and we can clean that up. So we just duplicated the application here. We don't need the company name field. We don't need the status field. We will want to keep email, phone. We can keep notes. We can get rid of that industry as well. We can get rid of the estimated contract value and we can get rid of those. So again, just to recap, we are going to have a leads application. So this is going to hold all of your leads and throughout stages that they go through. Once we get to a certain status, which in this case, I'm going to set it up as closed one. We're going to create them into essentially a customer or a client. And at that point, they will have two separate applications are connected to. So we'll have contact, which is essentially just a duplicate of the leads. And we'll have a company app as well that we will link the contact to. In the contacts field, there is one other thing that is kind of a neat feature that we can add on. So from the email is what we're going to pull in. So we're going to create a new field type 
and it's going to be a button. And this is great for anyone that is a Gmail or Google workspace user. So we're going to just call this compose Gmail and add a label to the button. We want URL formula. We're going to edit the formula. We're going to do a concatenate. And I am just going to copy the link. So I already have it over here and I will add this link in the description below. So essentially what it's doing is it's going to open up a new tab and it's going to create a compose type email. So what we're doing here is this is the, the URL and we're going to add a separate field to this field is going to be the email. So as you can see here, it's going to use Gmail to mail to the email address that it's associated with. I will show you what that looks like once we add in the example record here shortly. The last thing that we want to do is create a new application, all this company. And we can delete basically all of these fields. Here we can rename this to company name. And we might want a website. Maybe an address. You have different options within the address field. You have a single line and multi-line, depending on how you want to enter in the information. I'll show you how that works shortly. One other thing we will want to do is we will want to create a linked record. We will want to link it back to contacts and allow multiple records. That's fine. And then back in contacts. It will have created it here as well, but it's a hidden field at this point, And we'll want to show that. So like the company. So it links to a company here. It will link back here. So it links one way. It will have to link the other as well. So we can add in a example for the time being. I will add a new record. Actually, there's one more thing that we want to do on both the leads and contacts. And the contacts one, we'll go into modified field settings. So this is the first primary ID here. And we'll just call this contact ID. And it's going to be auto-generated. We can bring in the full name. And we'll bring in the company name as well, or the link to the company. And we can do the, basically the exact same thing over here in the lead ID. Again, full name and company name. And we'll up. now I'll go ahead and I'll just add myself as a potential lead. As you can see here, the full name field is brings in the first and last name in separate uh, fields within the field. That's kind of neat. And we'll just add a example of company. The default status is new. Add a phone number. And the smart docs field type is neat as well. It's basically a document editor built in at the field level and at the record level. So I can add different types of formatting. There's headings and you have all the formatting tools across the top. Um, insert checklist, numbered list, bullet list. You hit the slash key. It gives you different options here as well. So I'll just call this test information for now. You can add tables as well. You can add different users within this workspace. There's all sorts of things that you can do within it. So it's pretty awesome field type. But anyway, that is how you set this up. We'll select our industry the contract value. And if you wanted, you could attach the proposal here, but we've got the information that we need for the time being. Now, what we're going to do is essentially we're going to build an automation that looks at this field. And once it's at closed one it is going to move this lead into both the contact and company applications. So the way we go about doing that is go up to the CRM at the top, click automations, and we're going to add a trigger. So when a record matches a condition in the leads app, and the condition is where the status field is equal to closed one. And there's additional conditions we could add if we wanted to, but for this case, we'll just create the one and we're going to create a record. First record that we're going to create is going to be in the company application. 
we're going to do the company name and we're going to get that from the trigger. So we can add the company name there. That is it for company. We're just going to add the company name. We're going to keep it real simple. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and add the company website, company address, all of the lead level, and then make that flow nicely using the automation. But to keep things simple for this tutorial, I just going to keep it as the company name. And we did not add that information in our record anyway. So then the second action that we're going to do is we're going to create another record that's going to be in the contacts application. And then we've got a few more fields that we're going to connect to here. First one being full name and search that full name and we can add the email. We can add phone number and we could add. And I believe we called that notes back in the lead application as well. And the last thing, so this is going to link back to the company that we just created. Um, at this point in time, we can't call in a record that we've previously created, but to get by this, we have added the company record first. All the company record is being associated with is the company name. So if we add the company name here, it will create that link for us. Best practice, go up here and name our automation so we know what they are referring to later. In this use case, we are only going to have one for now, but basically what is going to happen is when client one create contact and company, we can turn this automation on, add automation on from here. What we're going to do in the lead, switch that over to closed one. And we can see here in a minute that records will get populated. And the other thing is within the automation, so you can see that it's been created, but within the automation, we can select the automation, go into history, and we can see that it was a success, how long it took, number of actions it performed. We can go further in. This is a new feature, but we can go further in to see the details. So at each trigger and the action level, we can see what happened, click on it further. We can see the inputs and exactly what type of information was being um, moved to which fields. So that is pretty neat to be able to see. So you can troubleshoot any issues or errors that you have down the road if those occur. But anyway, what has happened here is it has created the record, moved the information from leads to contacts for me, scroll across, we can see that it moved in the note as well and it's linked to the company record so from here we can see that it's created the company for me now as well i could go in and add a address if i wanted and it's auto completes it for me so i can select whatever i want here and auto completes if i click this will bring up the google map i could add my website and you can add any other type of field or type of information that you would want to track as well. So the last thing I wanted to show you is that Compose Gmail and the field that we created. What it is doing is, again, we brought in the static part of the link and then the dynamic portion is linking this email address back to it. So if I click Compose Gmail, as long as I've done it correctly, it should create this Gmail for us, or at least it will create the Compose view for us with the email address associated. So as you can see, after I click that button, it's going to compose a new Gmail for me. So that's a pretty neat little trick um, that I've recently learned and been adding to all of my CRMs uh, that I've built since then. That's it for this video. Um, if you liked it, please hit that like and subscribe button. And that way you can get notified of any further tutorials, tips, tricks in the future. Thank you.